morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So my father-in-law brought in his lawnmower, said it was making a really funny noise, uh, a scary funny noise like a lot of clinking and clanking and I said it sounded really bad. Well, when I pulled the dipstick to check for oil, there was no oil. And what you can see on the dipstick here, those are metal filings. Never a good sign to pull that out of your engine. So, this engine's a goner. I'm not even going to start it up uh, to listen to it. I'm just going to replace it. I have some used lawnmower engines out back I think I'm going to use. Uh, first thing I need to do is just take this thing out of here. It's a 20 horsepower Kohler Courage engine and a real downfall to this particular Kohler engine is that it's a gravity feed fuel system and if the carburetor floods all that extra gas goes into the engine oil compartment uh, and causes a too high oil level of course the oil would be diluted with gas at that point um, and if you run it that way for too long you might notice it smoking but eventually you will ruin your engine and I believe that is what happened here so getting this engine out of here should be pretty easy we just have four bolts that hold the uh, the engine to the frame and then we have of course the engine pulley that needs to be uh, taken off first uh, we have some wires we're gonna have to disconnect here and we're going to have to keep track of where and what those are so we already have the mower in the rack let's go ahead and jack it up here this is a new rack I picked up about a year ago it's works out great so the first thing we're gonna want to do is pull off the wiring here to the headlights and here disconnect the wire from the hood and it looks like if we have the hood at that position we can just lift it straight up and I'll spray a little bit of penetrating lube into the motor mount holes try and loosen those things up for me looks like this cover here is going to have to be removed the heat shield 3 8 bolts on each side So now it's probably time to get to the uh, engine pulley there. It's a 5 8 bolts on the bottom of the pulley there. Uh, it looks like we might have to take the little support here out of the way to have room to get to the bolt. There we go. Hopefully this pulley isn't stuck on here. Um, that can be a real pain in the rear when that happens. Well, it's not falling off like I would like. Should probably take off the belt, I guess. Usually you can just pull it off. There we go. One side off. And like I say, you can just pull it out of there usually. All right, see that pulley come down? That means it's not stuck. That's good news. So now we need to take off the motor mount bolts. There's four of them. I'll show you where the motor mount bolts are located. Okay, so you have two there, well, they're half inch, 
and there's two back there. One down. <clears throat> down I've got this one here might have to shorten my extension for that yeah that one's definitely tucked a little way up in there but you can get to it three bolts down one to go let's see if we can find that one on the other side well I get to the other side here to try and find that last motor mount bolt and it appears what's going on is you have to go up through this hole here, and I think you can reach the bolt. Let me try that. Oh! Ouch! Oh, dang, I might have to use a something different here. Oh, it looks like we'll just have to rotate the steering a little bit to get that steering bracket out of the way. Which direction here? Looks like that direction, huh? All right. Now we can get to that hole a little better. And you can see the bolt right up in there. Okay. All right. Bolt number four. So, uh, if we put the emergency brake on, it'll loosen up the drive belt here and we'll be able to pull it off that pulley easily. Um, but at this point, we'll probably be able just to lift the engine right off. So it'll be time to uh, disconnect the wiring here. <clears throat> and then we'll also have to disconnect the throttle cable over here. Looks like this line coming off the gas tank will have to disconnect. And of course the fuel line. So to get the wires apart at the plug here, um, you just simply squeeze on both sides and wiggle it and it comes apart and then you have a 7 16 um, nut that holds the starter motor wire on and you'll want to disconnect the headlight wire from the engine there. Nope. Come on. Dang it. There we go. And at the other side here, we're going to disconnect the throttle cable and the fuel line. And I think the fuel filter I'm going to try and disconnect here at the um, carburetor. So I think if you take off the air filter cover here, you'll be able to get to that fuel line. Maybe. I think we're going to have to take off the air filter backing plate too to get to that fuel line, but that's only uh, two or three bolts here. Oops, did you guys see that? You got two, uh, you got two, I believe they're 10 millimeter nuts here. And there's another connection somewhere. Oh yeah, there's a 5 16 back there. a shoulder bolt. Now this thing will come off and we can remove the fuel line. Grandpa! And you just give it a twist here. So I'll just screw this bolt into it. Can't find my hose clamp right now so we'll use this. And you'll have to thread it in a good half inch or so to get it to stop the gas from coming out. Alright, there we go. Stick this aside. 
put this back together just so it's keep track of everything. And this line here is just a an air uh, vent that goes into the carburetor here. So you can just unplug that. Looks like I'll have to disconnect it there also. I'm not being real careful with everything just because this engine is junk now. So I'll just rip it out of there. I think this engine is almost ready to come out of here. Uh, Double checking my work here. Make sure all the wires are disconnected. I've only removed the one plug and this the starter wire. But I think that's it. Now we just have to muster up some strength to pull this engine off. All right, folks. Remember, bend with your knees. Oh. Whoa. So this is what you have after you take the engine off. Pretty clean. Glad it came off that pulley easy. So if you look at this lawnmower, um, you activate the blades by um, moving this lever so it's manually activated, not electronically activated. Some lawnmowers just have a knob you pull um, to engage the blades. And this is important because uh, it, can, it determines what used engine you can put in there. Um, the lawnmowers that have the... <coughs> the lawnmowers that have the electronically engaged blade clutch um, require a bit more electricity so the alternators have to produce a little more amperage. Uh, what engine should we use for that lawnmower? I have one in mind. Welcome to the junkyard by the way. Uh, the one I have in mind is this one here. It's only a 16 horsepower engine, but it's in really good condition and runs great. And I'm pretty sure I can tune it to run like a mad dog. So, and this lawnmower had a transmission blowout, so uh, we can go ahead and use the engine for it. Here's the transmission blowout. Pretty brutal. But uh, at least we have a good engine here, I know that. And thanks to my friends at Grip Tools for sending me this uh, hose reel. It's an excellent tool and I mounted it to an old pressure washer frame. I'm able to put all the, uh, the tips where the old uh, pressure washer tips used to go. So now we have converted this to a uh, air station. You do have to install the uh, piece yourself here after you receive it but that's about all you need to do other than mount it up and I had to put a couple of uh, old rotor tiller weights here on it to keep it from tipping over and this will help me get air pressure out to the junkyard because uh, the junkyard is uh, at least 50 feet away and we got 50 feet of uh, air hose here so uh, let's do it I work all around this property and I don't have air everywhere so I just wheel this thing around. You can see I have some air hose heading out this way. Okay. Oh, we gotta watch out for this guy. He will sneak up on you. Okay. Now I have instant air and 50 more feet of hose. You can see I have a about a hundred foot extension hose coming out of my garage to the back side of the property, back on the back 40. And I'll show you how this works. So 
So now we have air uh, all the way out to the back 40. So I think what I'm going to do is just tip this thing kind of on its side. Looks like my neighbor's mowing his yard. We're gonna tip it on its side and wedge a log under there so we can get to the bolts easier. back there I see him you can't sneak up on me chunky Okay, wish me luck. Lift with the legs. Woo! There she is. She is a beaut. All right. Now I just have to figure out how to get that engine way over there. Almost there. There we go, folks. Ha. You want to make sure the surface is nice and clean when you remount the new engine or the used engine. And I think I'll probably remove that pulley to um, get it out of the way for when I mount the engine. So if you put on the parking brake, that will loosen that uh, drive belt. Now, be much easier to get that belt off of there. All right. So all these wires um, can look kind of confusing but there's really not that many. Uh, what we have here, these are your headlight. This is your headlight wire, of course. And if you look, you can see that the headlight wire ends up going into this plug right here. So you know that that's probably um, where one of the power sources needs to come from off the alternator. And I would bet that that yellow wire is probably the ground wire. And yeah, let's see what we got. Oh, I was worried about this muffler fitting in front here. Kind of have a couple of issues going on here. One, as you can see, it's pushed, the engine's pushed right up against the gas tank. And my other concern is that this exhaust pipe here is right up against the frame. So let's see if we can address those problems. Well, nothing seems to be going right with this repair. I decided I was going to take off the gas tank and see if this gas tank will work on that other Cub Cadet. Um, so 
I need to get this off of here. Disconnect the fuel line. Okay, so I have this gas tank off of here. Didn't hear my chicken. And now I need to get this tank off of here. I measured it. It looks like they're about the same width on the mounting bolts back in there. You can see there's one on each side. So, I think the tank should come out now, hopefully. Remember this engine's not even mounted in here yet. I might have to take it out to get this gas tank out. I think I do. Let's do it. One gas tank removal. Let's see what we have for fitment here. Hmm. Interesting. Go grab those other brackets. So I think this gas tank is going to work. Uh, just going to have to bend the tops of the bracket a little bit to get to where the mounting holes are. Uh, another thing I'm going to have to deal with is the fuel cap doesn't um, <clears throat> come out of the, the side anymore and see that hole there was for the fuel cap so now we're going to have to probably just drill a hole here I'm thinking okay so the gas tank went in all right let's see if everything fits in. you remember the mounting bolts wouldn't line up Oh yeah. All right, you know, I think that's going to work now. I may have to take a little piece of this frame out here for that muffler tip. But all in all, we're looking good. Well, as you can see, we're finally starting to make progress. Um, as I mentioned, I think I need to do something about the muffler here because it's the exhaust pipes contacting the frame so I'm going to uh, make some indentations in the back of that in the back of this exhaust pipe make it flat back there because I don't need much room uh, that should give me enough clearance there <clears throat> just by squishing that exhaust pipe a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the pulley installs correctly and then uh, probably mount the engine up. So I think I'm going to heat this baby up and uh, then bend it. Well, let's try that. I don't want to sit here all day. Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta get kind of medieval with this stuff. Yeah, I think we definitely did get the clearance that we need. Right on. Time to get these motor mount bolts in. Okay, I think I finally got one of these bolts started up in here. Yep. I 
Yeah, this was <clears throat> the hard one to get to. Got that hole to get up in there, but I think everything's going together here. Yep. Right on. So that's all four mounting bolts are lined up and in place. And I can show you the uh, clearance now. <clears throat> you know, it's not much, but at least it's not rubbing. Yeah, I think that's probably uh, enough clearance. Of course, uh, I can give it another. Whack. Yeah, I think I got a little more clearance. Perfect. We're good. All right, we're starting to look like a lawnmower again. I'm going to get under here and tighten up these motor mount bolts. Okay. One up in the hole here. Where's that other one? Did I forget one? Yeah, I think I forgot one. This back one over here. Alright, so as I mentioned, um, we're using different mounting holes than where the Kohler was mounted, but all the holes line up with these new holes. Alright, so all the bolts, engine mounting bolts, are in place and locked down. I think it's time to put this pulley on. And this pulley uh, doesn't have a separate key. Uh, the key is built into it there, if you can see. But the old engine that came out had a spacer. So I've got to take that spacer off, I think, and use it. I didn't measure the shafts. I probably should have, but I think I'm going to have to use that spacer. Nice. Okay. So it goes this way, and then we have the pulley that goes on. Looks like I'm going to have to take off this um, belt keeper to get the pulley on. I probably will just loosen up one side and take the other side out. Or I'll just take both sides out. Yeah. Okay, now the pulley goes on. And I need to slip that belt over. And I have to put down the camera to slip that belt over. Put the bolt in place. Everything seems to be going together nicely. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're about wrapped up with getting this engine mounted up here. Oops. Everything is in place. Yeah. Guess I can go ahead and put this deck back together. The belt just slips back on. And we'll put the belt keeper back in place. Everything's in place. Chunky plug here that round hole right there. There is the ground. So we know the corresponding hole right there is the magneto coil kill wire. And these are the only other two wires that come off this engine. Um, a red and a white. And both of those go up underneath the flywheel to the alternator. 
Uh, I have a manual I can look up that's going to, going to tell me exactly what each of these wires does. So let's check that out. So the manual is not real clear, unfortunately, but one thing it does say is that the red wire um, should be 2 to 4 amps DC unregulated um, for charging the battery. And the other wire, the white wire, um, the closest thing I can find in the book, it says that the white wire is a separate 5 amp AC circuit for lighting control. So the white probably goes to the lights and the red is what uh, recharges the battery. I took the plug off and it was not easy. I basically just had to use a razor blade and slice it down the side here. There is a special tool to get these out, um, but I don't have it. So I just used a razor blade. So we know that this wire goes right into this one. So that's our connection there. So the Kohler I took out of here um, had a fuel solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor which gets power from the engine or from the battery and that connection was the uh, red wire with the white stripe so I don't need to use that connection I can just leave that connection empty and what I see here is uh, these two red wires one of them loops around here and goes right to the lights and since they're connected I'm assuming the other one uh, is power as well so um, the red wire out of here out of the alternator is going to go uh, to those red wires there actually just run one of those red wires because I'm going to cut one uh, the one that goes to the lights and hook that to the white wire here which once again is the AC power remember red is the DC that goes back to charge the battery and white as near as I can tell uh, is the AC circuit so you can run it right to your lights uh, in other words you're not using battery power to run your lights but the engine does have to be running to turn the lights on I'm going to have to disconnect or at least pull these wires out of here and I just use a needle and you can see the tab down in there and if you can get it you can pull the wire out there we go and as I said the uh, the red wire is going to go into this connection and we'll want to definitely separate the wires here with some some tape and then this white wire we're going to um, splice right into the uh, the wire that goes to the lighting system so yeah I'm gonna open this up here so we can see what we're doing and now you can see what I mean here this wire uh, yeah this wire this is what goes to the lights and if you follow it back you'll see it's red wire down in here uh, that ends up going into the same connection there so we're just going to want to make sure we cut the right red wire which is this one so I'm going to cut it Okay, and we'll want to cap that wire off. The red wire here. We'll have to connect this one to this one. I'm going to open up this uh, wire protector here so I can <clears throat> get the starter motor cable over to the other side. Because the starter motor is now on the other side but there's plenty of room to reach so I have the starter motor wire now going over to the starter motor which is on the other side of the engine after I started looking into this uh, lighting circuit a little bit uh, 
I didn't see any sort of light switch that you turn on and off to turn the lights on and off. Sometimes the key, if you move it to a, well, once it started, if you move it back a position, that'll turn the lights on, but that's not the case on this model. And I don't see any sort of uh, on off switches for lights. So I think what was going on was this thing, uh, it just always lights up the headlights when you're driving it. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put an on off switch on this for the lights and I'm going to take I'm going to use the on off switch from the uh, the mower out back that I got this engine off of once again to the junkyard here yeah and uh, this is the switch I'm going to use looks like it still works and I'm going to cut these wires off down low so I can just reuse the wires. So the way this came off, uh, this white wire was going to match up with this white wire that comes from the alternator and the blue wire is what goes to the lights to power the lights. I don't have the wire connectors that I'm looking for, the a splicer connector, so I'm just going to use these. Okay, that one's secure. I need to do this wire too. All right, now this is just for testing purposes. Obviously, I'll make a much longer set of wires here. Just want to confirm that I actually know what I'm doing. Oh man, that's the wrong size. That stinks. I guess I'm just gonna have to squish these a little bit. wrong size connectors but it'll work as long as it's a nice tight fit like that I'm just crimping them a little bit together and then jamming this ah rat farts oops I forgot I didn't Lock these down. All right, nice tight fit. And like I say, this is just going to be for testing. So we can test out our lighting circuit. I believe all of our wiring is connected. And once again, uh, you're going to want to uh, insulate these wires, wrap some tape around them or some heat shrink. But we have our engine kill wire attached. We have our um, charging DC wire uh, that goes to the battery and we have our uh, AC power off the alternator that goes directly to the lights well now that we have things back together I'm kind of curious to see if uh, they'll at least turn over so I have the parking brake set let's give it a little shot here yeah, that's what we want. I have the fuel line here. I'll hook back up. Actually, I'm going to need to get a new fuel filter. This one's 
This one's dirty. And let's see, I might want to run it up here. Just so you can see the, uh, the fuel filter. I like that positioning. And it's not a gravity feed system, it is a fuel pump, so we can do that. Right, right about there. So now we need to worry about the cables, uh, throttle cable and choke cable. Uh, this lawnmower only had one cable, which when you moved it up here, it was in the choke position, but now we have to run a choke cable and a throttle cable. Uh, I grabbed this choke cable off the uh, old lawnmower that I took the engine out of, and there's plenty of length with it, uh, and I'll just have to make a square hole somewhere on the dash and mount this. So we have the choke cable taken care of. The throttle cable, um, miraculously, uh, what I did was I rerouted it through this heat shield instead of on the outside of the heat shield. And uh, it barely, barely fit. As you can see, it's a very tight fit, but it works. See, there it is. And uh, it's not hitting anything inside of there. It's not up against the uh, head or up against any hot components. So I think we're going to be good with that rerouting right there. I think what we need to do now is get medieval once again and drill a hole so I can get to the gas cap. All right, let's get after it. That's my tool and this. I'm going to do my best to mark the center point above the gas cap, which I think is right about there, right about there. That didn't work. There we go. Let's we'll try this again. Woo! That's going to be tough. Nice and slow, I guess, is the trick. Isn't too tough. I think that'll work. Just gonna smooth it out a little bit. I want to test this engine out. It's been sitting for about a year out back. I don't have the choke cable hooked up yet, but we can test it out. So as I said, this mower has been sitting for about a year, so um, the fuel in the carburetor may have dried up. So we'll probably have to turn it over for a while uh, to get fuel to pu start pumping again into the carburetor. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the fuel filter here. Uh, it should tell us if our fuel pump is working. When we turn the engine over, uh, it should fill up with gas. that so that's we know the fuel pump is working and pumping gas to the carburetor 
and I'll manually put the choke on here. We'll have to manually hold the choke on here while we get it fired up for the first time. I'm just trying to let the smoke clear out a little bit before I come back and start talking. Oh, but anyways, um, it runs. You saw it smoked a lot at first. I'm not real alarmed by that um, because the engine's been sitting for so long. Uh, but the fact that it was starting to clean up, uh, not puff out as much smoke tells me things were good. But it wasn't running exactly the way it should. Uh, I had to use it, the choke a lot to get it to stay running. Um, so we're going to look into this engine <clears throat> a little further to make sure we have it running in top shape. It's probably just been sitting too long. I think the first thing I'm going to do is replace these uh, crappy Autolite spark plugs. The reason why I call them crappy Autolites, um, I've had Autolite spark plugs fail on me right out of the box. So if that doesn't frustrate you, I don't know what will. Yeah, it's pretty fouled up. Spark plugs are in pretty rough shape. New NGK, which are the best spark plugs on the market. In my opinion. Put the other side on. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to do is replace the spark plugs. I guess I should check the condition of the air filter. It should be in good shape. Oh, not so much. Shake that thing out. So it could use a new air filter, but I think this one is should work for now. Good morning folks from Jeff's Little Engine Service. Uh, so I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. What we're going to do today is rebuild a carburetor on the good old Briggs & Stratton twin cylinder. Uh, this particular one is a 16 horsepower, but they uh, pretty much are all the same as far as the carburetor goes. The engine sputters and uh, won't rev up. I've tried adjusting the carburetor, but it just won't run right. Uh, I also have to have the choke out about halfway for it to run good so I think it's time to rebuild the carburetor on this thing. What you want to do is take off your air filter cover it'd be a good idea to replace this air filter it's pretty dirty
All right, so you can see what we're dealing with now is basically um, just three bolts. You have your breather hose there, which you can basically just get, put your hand underneath and pull that out. Uh, so let's go ahead and take those bolts off. So this is how we do it in 2017, folks. Saves on my uh, carpal tunnel syndrome I have in my wrist, and it's much, much quicker. All right, so there is a gasket there. Be careful not to lose it. Uh, now you're dealing with uh, four bolts, same size, five sixteenths. And uh, you go ahead and take those off. At this point, um, it's a good idea to take off the choke cable. One, two, three, four. Man, this thing's slick. All right. So be careful not to knock any more crud into the carburetor when you take this part off. Uh, once you disconnect your cable here, you can lift this part right off. And we can see what we're dealing with here. That actually look at, looks like it's in pretty good shape. That's a good sign. Everything's nice and clean. What I do notice is uh, if you look directly down in here into the float bowl, uh, you can see sediment and whatnot in there. There's a lot of stuff in there we need to get out. Let me switch to the other side here for you. Now we need to get into uh, that bolt there. That's your carburetor drain plug there. So what you have here is a 5 8 um, inch drain plug that you want to take out to drain the gas. Um, it's a good idea to have a rag there. There's also a little o-ring on this plug you want to make sure is in good shape. It looks like our o-ring is in pretty good shape. But you can see the sediment a little bit better now. There's chunks of stuff, chunks of stuff there and there. So we'll clean all that out. But what we also need to take out right now is the main jet assembly, which is located back in here. And that's that brass plug. I'm going to adjust my camera so you guys can get a better view. So yeah, that brass plug back in there is an Allen wrench. Um, and you want to be really careful taking it out because if you strip it out, it's brass. So it's real easy to strip out. So um, make sure you have the right size Allen wrench. As near as I can tell, it's a 3 sixteenths. So I'm going to make sure I get a good tight fit in there before I try to loosen it. Oh, all right, we're good. And sometimes you have to like, stick a screwdriver down in here to push it out, to help get it out. There we go. And you'll want to make sure that this uh, main jet is nice and cleared out. Make sure the hole is clear. So now we're going to take the um, fuel pump apart. And you have to be a little bit careful doing this because parts literally will jump out at you. So um, be careful. I'll show you what to expect when you start taking it apart. Looks like they're quarter inch. Or you can use a screwdriver. Yeah, 
and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel line just to get it out of the way. These are pretty long bolts. So there are three, I think, three springs that you have to keep track of. And I try to take it off with the black plastic part first. Okay. Oops, I forgot to remove the, uh, the vacuum hose off the bottom here. So you want to disconnect that too. You'll also want to inspect that hose to make sure there's no cracks in it or anything because that's what op operates your fuel pump um, off of your engine vacuum pressure. Okay, so I have this assembly apart. Let's take a look and see what it looks like here on the inside. So this part here is your diaphragm or your fuel, your fuel pump diaphragm. Uh, you can see we have a little copper uh, spring there and we also have this spring here that has a little cap on it. Uh, when you tip it... Oh, that's the telephone. Don't mind the phone. That thing rings all the time. I think we're missing one of these copper springs. Uh, so you have these springs like I showed you, but we're also supposed to have a spring um, right on that post there. So I'll have to review the tape to see if that thing came flying out of there when I took it apart or if it was missing. That could explain why um, it wasn't running very well. So I guess it, that spring was missing, but I'll show you how to put it back on when we reassemble. Uh, once again, everything on the inside of the uh, fuel pump looks nice and clean. This is the carburetor kit you'll want. It's a Briggs & Stratton part number 694056. You'll see your uh, carburetor mixture screw right there. You'll want to take that out and uh, make sure that those passageways are clean under there. And uh, I'll show you how to set it to the initial setting when I'm reassembling. I'm going to mention on some models, uh, the main jet that you pull out of here is considerably longer. Uh, it's about, oh, two inches long a piece of brass, and you'll want to clean out every little orifice and hole in that. So luckily, this carburetor um, was not in that bad of shape. Um, I didn't have to scrape the gasket surface much, uh, and I didn't have to clean out much from the inside. I've taken these apart before, and... It's been a mess, taking me a couple hours just to clean out all the gunk and corrosion. But luckily, this one's in pretty good shape. Alright, so let's take this apart. All you have to do is pull this pin out. Hopefully that's not stuck in place. Um, and you take the float off, shake it, listen for, uh, see if there's any gas in there. This one's still good still floating. Uh, here is your float valve that you can investigate if you like. Um, sometimes you can tell when they're bad at the tip. Um, other times you can't tell. Um, but it's always a good idea to replace it when you get a new carburetor rebuild kit. Let's see if I can get this gasket off of here. Um, Actually, before I destroy this gasket, uh, I want to match it up from the gaskets in the kit here because that's how many gaskets they give you to choose from. Apparently, there's a lot of different models with the same style carburetor, but you can see we have quite an assortment, so we'll want to match it up. Dang, I think I got it on the first first grab. Should buy a lottery ticket. Let's see. So the new float needle comes in a box. And be careful because this is, as you can see, where all your springs are. 
so you don't want to lose those you'll need this clip and there's the valve that little copper spring like there is is one of the springs that is missing in the carburetor so it gives you all the parts in this carburetor kit to basically rebuild the entire carburetor and you attach the float valve just like that the way it came out of there now that we've identified what gasket we need it's time to get this old gasket off of here nice it came off in one piece someone must have rebuilt this carburetor recently and they did a pretty good job except for that one spring that was missing so this is your float needle and this brass piece here is called the needle seat uh, when your carburetor gets in really bad shape you have to replace the needle and seat on this model uh, however you can get away with just replacing the needle 99% of the time. You usually only have to replace the seat uh, if the lawnmower has had a lot of use and is about 50 years old. So you'll want to clean out the inside uh, the best you can. Try to make sure there's no sediment or corrosion left floating around in there. I usually stick a Q-tip down into the seat, something soft, and clean it out just to make sure there's no uh, particulates down there. And you'll also want to make sure that the gasket surface is ready for a new gasket. The gasket goes on first, make sure you put it in the correct direction. Um, some of these gaskets fit kind of stiff, so you just have to push it down into place like that. Now I'm going to head, go ahead and install the float valve. I don't think it matters which way you put the spring on. Oh, god dang. Mosquito. Okay. Okay, the float valve is dangling off the float. Put it in place, make sure the clip doesn't come off. They give you a new um, hinge pin in the kit, but you usually don't need it. All right, so the pin is in place. The float can move freely. Uh, you can see the the clip is still where it's supposed to be in place. Um, now what you want to check is you want to make sure that the gap is even. So to adjust the float you just want to make sure the gap is the same in front as it is in back when you hold the uh, float upright like this. You want to make sure you want to make sure the float when it's in the down position has equal gap all the way around and this one does so I don't need to readjust it. So this component is ready to go back onto the rest of the carburetor. Time to clean this sucker out a bit. Kind of hard to get any sort of brush down in there but this seems to work pretty good. There is a lot of little nooks and crannies you want to make sure to clean out. Uh, you'll also want to make sure that these tiny little passages ways here uh, there's several holes along here you'll want to make sure that they're clear uh, by sticking a little piece of uh, copper wire or something down through it it 
and you really want to make sure to get down in there because that's where a lot of the uh, sediment ends up and that's also where your main jet is. So make sure all those crevices down in there are cleaned out. There was also a little bit of corrosion on the front of the fuel pump here. Make sure to clean that all up. I want a nice good gasket surface all the way around. We'll go ahead and put the main jet back in. Now you be careful, you don't want to tighten it up too much uh, because it will break or strip. Just want to make sure it's good and snug. And for sure I want to mention that, oh, pardon me. And don't forget to clean out your adjustment screw passage there. I poked some wires in there and blew some air in there and looked with a flashlight and I could see it was clear. So, so we can put that screw back in and set it to its preliminary adjustment. So the initial adjustment on the uh, screw here is one and a half turns out. <clears throat> so what you do is you screw it in all the way very lightly. Just screw it in until it light until it stops. Don't tighten it. Just right to there. And now you back it out one and a half turns. Half, one, one and a half. So this part is all clean and reassembled. So we can go back in place. And I'm not going to use that uh, drill to tighten these up all the way because I'm always worried that that drill is going to strip things out. So I'll use a good old fashioned socket wrench for that. And when you tighten these down, as with anything, you want to kind of stagger how you tighten it down. semi-tight semi-tight and then I'll go back around and cinch them down you want to cinch them down pretty tight but uh, not so tight that you strip things out remember it is an aluminum carburetor so aluminum is pretty soft metal it's easy to strip Okay, so All right, that should be good now we'll work on getting this fuel pump back together that can be kind of tricky Don't forget the carburetor plug here. So this gasket goes first, like so, and then uh, Looks like it goes like this. All right, so we have our new gaskets on this part. And then we have our new diaphragm here, which we'll install also. So here's where it can start to get tricky. Uh, you have to start balancing all these parts. Um, so your first copper spring goes on that little post. And of course, your big one here. Big one goes there. And we have our little cap. 
and then we have this. Now, this side you just want to make sure you don't have these springs fall out. And then this goes together on that side, like so. And now we just have to um, install this last little copper spring um, on the front of the carburetor. I think I'm going to jack up the lawnmower to make it easier. Is it basically it goes right there. We're going to jack it up a bit here to try and help us out while we try and hold all these parts together. Should make it a little easier. So you'll want to put this little spring in place. Hopefully it stays for you. Well, here we go. Try to keep everything in place. I will put um, the screw through the middle hole here just to help hold all the gaskets together. Like so. And now in one movement I'm going to um, push this up against here, try to keep everything in place. Actually, I think I'm going to put in, um, I think I'll put in two screws to hold the gasket and the diaphragm in place. Like that. So now I have two screws in here. All the springs are still in place. I think I'll be able to put it up here. Okay, very carefully. Straight on. And don't worry if you mess up like I just did, just take it off, reposition everything, and try again. Try this again. I think we got it this time. Yep, and keep pressure so the springs don't fall apart when you're tightening these down. Just give it a little wiggle. Hopefully nothing's bound up in there. Not too tight because you can crack the plastic backing plate there. We're almost ready to test this out. I inspected the vacuum line, it's still in good shape, so we'll put him back on. And here's our fuel line we'll put back on. So everything is all hooked up again. So remember this carburetor is empty of gas, so the fuel pump's gonna have to work for a little while before it fills up the carburetor and uh, runs. So let me go ahead and close the choke. This time the fuel pump is filling up the carburetor.
So to properly tune this engine, the uh, air filter assembly has to be back on there. So let's go ahead and put that back together. So I should mention uh, also that not all of these carburetors uh, have that adjustment screw down there. Some, it's a, um, it's a jet, so you have to take it out and clean it, but uh, there's no adjustment. You just screw it in tight and call it good. So with this one, you want to be out um, about one and a quarter to one and a half turns from um, when you screw it in and it stops. You back it out one and a half turns or so. To find the adjustment, um, you while the engine is running at a low RPM, you, uh, you turn that screw slightly one way or the other and you can tell that the engine performance improves. So um, it's just kind of a trial and error thing. Um, once you adjust it, with the engine running slow then you'll want to rev up the engine and make sure things are still running good and do the same thing with the adjustment while the engines running at high speed um, and then go back to low speed and adjust it and you just kind of go back and forth until you find the happy spots well folks that's how you rebuild the carburetor on a Briggs & Stratton industrial commercial 16 horsepower through I don't know I think they made them through 20 horsepower industrial commercial twin it's a good looking engine a lot better than that crappy cooler we took out of there and I did test out the light switch and everything seems to be working just fine the lights turned on I just need to extend these wires now and decide where to put the light switch on the dash. I think I'll probably put it somewhere around in this area. Good luck with your project, folks.